Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I want to start out by thanking my good friend from Florida for his hard work and his effort on this, and also for his hard work and his outstanding effort to speak on behalf of the Cuban people that wish to be free and against communism worldwide, and I thank him for that. Every day, Americans across our nation, like the folks that I have the honor to represent in Pennsylvania in the 10th Congressional District, just a few hours from this place, are still suffering the impacts of this administration's reckless spending. Unlike the federal government, they have to make tough choices. They've got to make their budgets balanced. They can't just print money. They've got to stretch their dollars. They have to forego auto repairs or maybe something around their home that needs attention. Take items off their grocery list. Choose different items that they can afford, all because of too much spending. They pare back their spending in ways that may be uncomfortable because we won't in this town. To me, it's unacceptable, it's unconscionable, Madam Chair, that the United States Congress has been unwilling to do the same for decades now. While, like last year, I appreciate that the underlying bill has eliminated or reduced many wasteful accounts, and it has, due to the good work of the chairman here, with all due respect, there's still a lot more work to be done and can be done. The State and Foreign Correction, the State Department and international organizations funded by the final state and foreign operations funding bill have time and time again advanced and sent American tax dollars to causes that run counter to American values and our foreign policy objectives. This amendment reduces the amount for international disaster assistance from just over $3.4 billion to zero. Now, while I had admire the desire of many, including myself, to be charitable and help others around the world. We've got to remember we're being charitable with other people's money, we're being charitable with taxpayers' money, taxpayers that can barely afford their own bills, their own electricity bills, food bills, daycare bills. Good, God forbid you've got to buy a, a new car or a new home or pay the interest rates, all due to what's happening here. We want to be charitable, but the fact of the matter, ma matter, Madam Chair, is that America is broke. And it's hard to help other folks when you can't help yourself. This is nearly $3.5 billion, which, like many other of the dollars spent in this bill, does not go directly to helping Americans in America. Our constituents simply can't afford yet another line item in their tap, on their tap while they're already bearing the brunt of reckless spending by President Biden. With that, I reserve. The gentleman reserves. For what purpose does the gentlewoman seek to be recognized? I rise to claim opposition to this amendment. The gentlewoman is recognized. The Madam Chair, I rise in strong opposition to this amendment. Once again, um, it's very um, disconcerting to think that Republicans want to um, actually uh, offer an amendment that really is a lifeline for millions of people. Uh, and it's the most basic expression of American commitment to the dignity of everyone. The IDA account provides life-saving support, including food, water, shelter, emergency health care, sanitation and hygiene, and critical nutrition services to the world's most vulnerable and hardest to reach people. Whether one has a religion or not, uh, our values and people of faith uh, would be shocked to know that um, the Republicans want to do this. This assistance is needed now more than ever. After years of decline, there are more people facing hunger now than in 2019 almost 30% of the global population. It's important to provide this humanitarian assistance because it's morally the right thing to do uh, and because it reflects also on our global leadership. I, I hope there's still a sense of uh, morality uh, and a sense of values as you, you know, the Republicans, look at how the impact of cutting many of these programs will impact human beings in their lives. I would ask our colleagues, what would they do if they, would not, if they could not protect their children 
from preventable disease, not be able to afford food or clean water that does not make them sick. You do almost anything to prevent that from happening. It's really unthinkable that the United States would stop providing this support to those that have lost everything through a natural disaster or conflict. The consequences of this amendment are almost too terrible to contemplate. I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. We don't have to question each other's morality here. We all want to help. Everybody wants to help. We're representatives of the United States, and we're heading into disaster season in the United States of America. Whether it's hurricanes across the South or wildfires in the West, it's coming here. But this is about foreign disaster aid, Madam Chair, sending money abroad. And we can always do that when there's something that happens. We can come to Congress here. We can come in and vote for things at that time when they happen. But I want to say this, Madam Chair, we want to put our chairman in the best position possible, in the best position possible to negotiate. This isn't about questioning our moral objectives, party by party, side by side, but we know that there's going to be a negotiation with the Senate. We know that. And we want to put this chairman in the best position possible. Look, nobody here believes that we're going to end up with less right, than we go in with. You're going to end up with more. That's what happens every single time, every single time in this body. So let's put this chairman in the best position possible when he goes in and they say, oh my goodness, this isn't, this isn't going to work. And then he can negotiate from there. Maybe it's not 3.5 million, maybe it's 3.4, which isn't big, a big reduction in Pennsylvania where people can't pay their electricity bills, but it's something. It's a start down the road. And so I want to put this chairman in the best possible position to negotiate or to urge adoption, and I yield the balance. The gentleman yields. The gentlewoman from California yeah. is recognized. Madam Chair, uh, of course, I fully disagree with the gentleman. Uh, this is about questioning our moral objectives, uh, using millions of people's lives as a negotiating tactic is truly questionable and despicable. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields. The gentleman from Pennsylvania. Oh, the question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Those in favor say aye. 